Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the bizarre magic of Brian Rushworth. I needed to reconsider whether or not I should have that Paula Dean clip in the intro. <laughs> so one of the things that uh, that Scott wanted me to do more than anything was to eat fire on stage. And uh, he's like, hey man, how do we handle the, the fire eating thing? And I was like, well, it's probably best to wait until the day of and meet with them and just sort of show on and see if it's cool or not. He's like, I was like, you probably don't want to ask for permission in advance. He's like, great. Next day he says, we can't do fire eating. <laughs> but as luck had it, I talked to the manager. Lights. The concept of resistance to fire is one as old as history itself. Well, let's get them all down. As far back as the ancient Greek tragedy Medea, references are made to holding a bar of red hot iron in order to prove innocence or sincerity. The first written account of a fire eater, however, occurs in 1607 when Sir Henry Wotton wrote of an English sailor who could eat fire as though it were candy. With that in mind, I'm going to show you guys the simplest method to extinguish a torch with one spell. <laughs> it is more impressive, it looks more like this. There we go. Now the first commercially successful fire eating act went on tour during the 1680s. It was performed by a French man who was renowned not only for his ability to swallow flame, but for the apparent affinity he would display for it. In fact, people claimed that his teeth and gums were so calloused and immune to the heat and flame, he could actually hold a burning torch between them, just like so. At which point, his audience was like, freaking nuts, it was awesome. <laughs> some people call the golden age of fire eaters. This is a time when performers with names like Yamadeva or Chingling Fu, they shifted the focus of fire eating away from the tolerance of the heat and the flame, and instead they moved it towards the artistry and the skill with which they manipulated it. fire eating had taken a nosedive. In fact, Harry Houdini, of all people, said that fire eating was an art over which oblivion threatens to stretch her darkening wings. This is when fire eaters were kicked out of the theaters and into the streets, where they began to perform increasingly dangerous stunts like the tongue transfer. by showing you guys the single most difficult and dangerous fire-eating stunt. This one's called the human candle. That wasn't it. <laughs> That's what happens when you get too greedy. I brought a few copies here tonight, and when I wrote the book, I discovered a combination of feats that's become my favorite thing to show people. Here we go. <laughs> 